here we are in the midst of another Brewers and Biz Dev starting in the middle, like I like to do. And um, in this week's <laughs> illustrious episode, we have Sam McKenna. So Sam, why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself to our billions and billions of viewers. Uh, I am Sam McKenna. I'm the founder of Sam Sales Consulting. Uh, I've been in sales uh, for the past 13, 14 years as an individual contributor and executive leader. There is a chance you have probably gotten an email from me, which of course was beautifully crafted and you responded to right away. Um, but that is me in a nutshell. I live in DC and there's my home office behind me. Nice. Woohoo! And Woo -hoo! the pace too. That's like a real elevator pitch. Uh, elevator <laughs> I pitch. had it written down on a crib sheet. <laughs> it's cheater. Uh, excellent. <laughs> and, uh, and we're splitting off of the norm here today because uh, while you had originally picked Anchor Steam beer, and so I went, I searched online for the distributors to find where it was. It's still my heart. Bar. And so I'm going to crank open an Anchor Steam beer for the first time in my life. But what, are, what is it that you're getting into? All right, so I'm I'm getting after it uh, in a real good way at four o'clock in the afternoon. I'm having a Vienna Lager, which is a local beer, uh, Devil's Backbone Brewing Company here in DC, and I think this is a it's a pint in a can. So, you know, I've already had six of these before our um, session, so I I thought I'd be good and primed for you. Um, it's a delight though, but I think you're gonna love Anchor Steam. It's a San Francisco beer, um, yeah, and so. Yeah. I've even gone to the brewing, the brewery. I have my T-shirt. That's right. Yeah, it's good. It's not, it's not life changing, you know. We're not having no. like Opus One here or anything like that. Your four hundred dollar bottle of wine. Um, I've had enough it, changes in my life anyway. I don't need this. Beer right. Too. I mean, <laughs> but it's better than Natty Light, right? Slightly, slightly more flavorful. Yeah, I'm glad that that's the standard we're establishing. As long as people recommend that I buy a beer that's better than Natty Light. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I heard there's one from Wisconsin that I'm supposed to get. Spotted Cow or something like this. Do you know what this beer is? Mm. You can only buy it in Wisconsin. Apparently people pack it in their car and then they drive across state lines and deliver it to their friends. I've never had it, but I, I think that's what it's called. Wow. If you have any cheese heads on the phone, I'm sure they're like, that's not on the phone. Watching our webinar, I'm sure that they're like, that's not what it's called. You're an absolute idiot. And now, now our viewership is going to drop off. Yeah, yeah. People have like lost all credibility at this point. So they don't but, know. Beer. Yeah, could be even know biz day? <laughs> no. But yeah, no, this is good. I uh, I like it. Um, it's part of the fun of these, right? Is like people get me to do try new things, and I like the beer part usually better than the coffee part. Um, you know, trying new coffee. Is <laughs> like, oh, this is also coffee. Thank you. Um, What's but your what's your yeah. what's your standard brew? What do you always have at home? Like what uh, do we always uh, find in your fridge? What is it? Uh, Hayburner, which is a local thing. It's uh, from Big Ditch Brewery. Um, it's the it's the <clears throat> the local Buffalo beer that's that's kind of penetrated the market the most. So even if I'm driving out in the woods somewhere, and like I was at a cottage on, on Lake Ontario last week, and I can go to some very rural tops markets or something and and they've got hay burner right it's gotten out that far and amazing it, it's an ipa well actually it's an american pale ale super drinkable and it runs a 7.2 abv so nice. you can get to the point pretty quick uh, <laughs> the, the key is to Six not of drink those. It. yeah you don't want to drink it like you're drinking a light lager you will end up in rough shape but um yeah it's a <laughs> It's a Buffalo classic at this point, and this is the go-to because you can get it anywhere, unlike all the other really craft, you know, tiny ones. You have to, like, go to the brewery and knock at the back door of a secret. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, uh, didn't our buddy Pelkey own a brewery, or was that a distillery? A distillery, yeah. He owned, uh, he was a part owner of uh, Black Squirrel Distillery, which they made a, a maple syrup-based rum, which... And I say this not because we're friends, uh, but it was delicious. <laughs> it was like a rum you could drink straight. You don't need a, you don't need a sweet mixer. It's got like sweetness to it. Do you get a dollar every time you say that? Does he yes. still pay you? Yeah. Yes. It's nice. Yeah. Also, sorry. I'm oh. fresh. There, I just <laughs> <okay. laughs> Poor Matt. <laughs> I hope he doesn't exactly. listen. <laughs> so um, I think that, you know, well, one of the things, actually, I'm just going to jump right into it here, um, <clears throat> is since in our chat before we, we got this going, uh, we're looking at talking about a couple of things. And I've <laughs> been inspired by my coworkers to, you know, to 
be as far go as far as I want to go with certain uh, conversations. And I think this is relevant these days because obviously we're in business development. We're out there like we're doing messaging, right? So we're engaging with people and we're engaging online, which is where everyone's engaging now because they're home. Um, <laughs> and some of us are getting out at this point. But there's also, I don't know if you've noticed, there's some stuff going on in the outside world that's something less than fun, peaceful, normal, right? And there's a lot of sides to it. I've noticed. Yeah, no, cool. <laughs> that's the beauty of the internet. Um, and so, you know, and I've, I, you know, I've got my own challenges with where to walk the line. Right, like when you're when you're putting stuff out on like social media is like let's just focus social media because emails, and I don't mean like the using COVID nineteen as an excuse. I mean like political kind of issues. Um, oh yeah, or issues that you know we've always called political, and some of which you some of us think are more human rights issues than they are political issues that Indeed. then become politicized. And LinkedIn is always been a very professional kind of buttoned up like let's keep all that stuff off and that's changing recently and i've participated yeah. i mean I've, I've made a black lives matter post uh on linkedin and telling a story right like actual real personal story not just uh, some kind of a you know, screaming at the world kind of a thing but like <laughs> I, I know these things are real i've experienced them and like let's call it out and let's do better and while that gets good attention, it has rights prone to be divisive because some people don't agree. Um, totally. And not everyone is as willing to be divisive or off putting as I am. Uh, it's kind of a special part of <laughs> Thank my Thank God business. for you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, and I mean, and frankly, just to be like fully out there, I've done that on LinkedIn recently um, in the world of Facebook, which I did invite business contacts two years ago uh, and then in 2017 I shook some of them free but oh. I've also made posts of this nature but I also I mean I've uh, I've come out uh, as like a pansexual on Facebook recently and okay. a lot of like you know luckily very supportive things but that's also like in professional fields right it's always been a oh, really? all like politics sexuality if it's anything that's not the normal uh, sexuality. Yeah. That's you know my view on that. Just to kick it in is that like okay, I understand why people are concerned and why it's an uncomfortable conversation. Yeah. And for me, that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be had. <clears throat> for me, that the fact that it's uncomfortable might be a good thing, but also it's only uncomfortable because we haven't been allowed to have those conversations openly. And the fact that it's kept quiet adds to why people after a while, go to the next level. Because when you can't express yourself, you express yourself in other ways, right? So I'm curious, yeah. like you're, you know, you're a big player on LinkedIn, you get a lot, you know, of engagements, and some people like might have more to lose. As someone who might <laughs> have more to lose professionally than me by speaking freely, like where do you see the line for yourself? And where do you, what do you, what do you see as being appropriate and useful and not? I think that, so I think a couple of things. One, um, I I woke up the other night and at like two in the morning, I can't remember who was, uh, Kyle Coleman. Kyle Coleman at the, v he's a VP of sales at Clary. Um, when I, and I were talking about this, not at two o'clock in the morning, just to be clear. Um, oh, no, we were talking about mom. this. <laughs> hey Kyle, what's up? Um, <laughs> um, we were talking about this because I was looking at Twitter uh, and then I was reading the comments and I started to show my fiance, I think a couple of nights before that. And I was like, look at this. And he's like, are you reading the comments? And I was like, yes. And he's like, you're not allowed to do that. And I was like, dang. And he's right, because they make you so angry, right? And you're like, oh my gosh. And then Kyle Coleman was saying like, there should be a rule. You never read Twitter like before bed or like at 4 a.m. ever. Um, but I think that there is one, there's so much out there. I think for me, there are things, so two perspectives on LinkedIn. I think, you know, in my, in my position, and I know we've got, you know, a ton of, you know, I, I hate this word, but LinkedIn influencers. And at the end of the day, if you have a ton of followers, thousands and thousands of followers, you are a LinkedIn influencer. People follow you for a reason. They want your content for right or wrong. And then you'll gain followers or lose followers, depending on your stance. And I think the thing for me, just like you, I, um, I posted about Black Lives Matter and diversity. And on one, one end, it's like, oh, well, everyone else is doing it, so you do it too. But on the other end, it's no. You have this incredible platform to use. 
whether you have 100 followers or 100,000 followers, you have an opportunity to show your value system in one way or another. Now, my value system is obviously pro-diversity, pro-Black Lives Matter, pro, you know, let's rely on science um, to make our opinions on things that are going on in the world, um, not the other route. Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of my political leaning for you. Um, but I think that the, the values that I talk about on LinkedIn and what I support are, are in my opinion, of good character. You know, they're good character. They're doing the right things. They're supporting individuals. They're, um, <clears throat> they're, they're part of the Give First campaign, how you and I and Matt and all these people got connected. Um, but I think that I want that to be part of my, not only my brand, because it's who I am and what I truly believe, but I wanted to be part of our business brand. And I'm not shy about putting that statement out there because if I have someone, let's say that was considering hiring me that feels in a completely different way than I do, um, it doesn't support diversity or doesn't support those things, then it's probably better that we not work together anyway. So I'm thrilled to lose followers if they don't believe in that same structure, which I think to your point is not a political stance, it's human rights. Um, and, uh, you know, um, I, I, I could care less about losing, losing that audience. I'm, I'm, happy to, to, I'm happy to shed it. I think on the, the Facebook side or the Instagram side where there seems, Twitter even, there seems to be so much there. I tend to stay off of it just because I think it's going to make me go gray faster. If I start to get in these arguments, I'm like, oh, my God. And there are so many people who are just, uh, you, there is no opportunity to reason for them, reason with them. There's no accountability for actions. There's no, uh, you know, it's a quick, quick, uh, I can't even think of the word, uh, retort about how past, you know, political standings or presidents have done the same thing or worse. Um, it's all based on lack of evidence or facts, all things I don't really enjoy. Um, so I try to, I try to stay back on that. I don't know, but do, are you engaging? Are you, are you engaging pretty, pretty hard on those issues? <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a non-professional. It's, it's pretty hard. And I mean, frankly, you know, I've been out in the streets. Uh, I mean, for a week solid at one point, and I've been uh, rubber bulleted uh, for standing in a place peacefully. I've been pushed around. You know, I mean, I've been in the middle, like really like the middle of the action. And so yeah. my thing is like, yeah, like just keep doing that. And yeah, that, that friend, friend count is going down pretty quick. I mean, I, I think I was like 60 plus at this point in the last three weeks I've managed, to, which, yeah, wow. really, who cares? I don't, Right. and, and some All of them, the break, I mean, the relatives and like close relatives, like I'm not talking like distant relatives are now oh, yeah. blocked and don't answer calls. And and I'm, I'm intense, you know, I am not the like, let me just sit here for three hours to like form three paragraphs. I will <laughs> throw a little bit in there. I am intentionally a little pokey, which is not gonna, like, you know, it's not going to create. You're spoon. You stir the pot. Yeah, it's a little bit stirring, but it's also like, here's a video. Here's an actual, here's evidence, right? Here's something, oh, I was just standing here. And so the part where I'm standing somewhere and you're in the woods somewhere on the internet and telling me what's actually happening where I'm standing is unacceptable. Well, so I, so I'm, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And so I, as I mentioned, I'm, uh, I live in DC and so we're, we're really in the, the thick of it with our, our protests and then, you know, with our, um, our president being here. Um, and I think one of the interesting things though, is that the, again, it, it's like, even when you have evidence and you're like, here, here's proof of what's going on. You, you cannot get through to somebody. I, um, I, you may have seen this, maybe I'm late to the party, I think it aired last night, but um, I lost my mind this morning, uh, today, hearing about a, uh, a church in Arizona um, that is hosting our, our president and that they have um, a magical air purifier um, that it, it COVID cannot live in it, right? And you're like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, it's like, I start like to sweat and scream yeah. and I'm like, and for what? Um, but it, and you just, I think this is the most surprising part. And then I'll stop talking about this, that you assume other people are reasonable, <laughs> that yeah. you imagine the world around you has the ability to reason and use facts and weigh things and consider and then make choices. And they hide amongst us that they absolutely don't. And they're like, this seems to be right. I read it on, you know, Breitbart and, and it's totally fine. Um, yeah. Anyhow. Well, <laughs> I think, you know, one of those things, 
And, I, and for me, it's one of the you know, justifications, I could be wrong, for being as forward as I am, is that I also, I don't, yeah, I don't believe that anymore, what you just said. So, uh, I mean, there's a certain person who's in a certain place who is like, oh, okay, I'm open, but I spent a lot of time, you know, reading, learning, not like I'm a brain scientist, but I've, about these things particularly, I've always had an obsession, you know, like with kind of like cults, how that dynamic works out and how people, all the way up to like larger cults that we call yeah. a different name, <clears throat> but, but like how the brain works such that we believe what we believe and it's not reason. Like, the, you yeah. know, reason is something where if everything else is absent, that's a great way to go about it, but that's not why we believe or think things. Uh, it's interesting. My, my friend, one of my very best friends, Robin, is super into cults. I'm like, hey, did you see this rom-com recently? And she's like, is it about cults? And I'm like, no. And she's like, well, then no, I didn't. And I'm like, okay. But yes, same, same fascination, you know, Charles Manson, the whole night. I mean, just like, who are, who these people are, how they are swayed, right? And it, it's, it's, it's amazing. Like you take a step back, even I was like, I'm so um, adamant in my way of thinking as you are too. Like, this is the right thing. And this is the wrong thing. Like you've got it figured out. And I stopped for a minute the other day and I asked uh, my fiance Ryan, I was like, what if we're the ones that are being brainwashed and we don't realize it? And he's like, no, stop right now. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but for, for a second, I was like, you know, what, what, what it must be like to be on that other side of the fence to be like, this is right. And, you know, I don't support um, diversity. I don't support uh, transgender rights. I don't support this. Like, what must it be like to be like, this is the correct way of life. And I just like, my, my brain doesn't add it together. I just, I, I can't imagine it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that for me and that, you know, and here's the crossover to the world of marketing sales right because well that's right it's an influence <laughs> game right and so yeah. if you don't actually have a good bead on what has people interpret and believe and respond the way they do you're probably you know unless you're just getting lucky or have some other factor at play you're not going to be great in either one of those games and there's you know there are certain resources and knowledge of that uh by players i think more on one side than the other of those kind of debates yeah. where they've known what marketing is for a while and uh, and to your point of the reason to where other people who are like oh anyone reasonable person wouldn't blah 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 but these folks know that that's not what drives decision making in human beings and Completely. so the information you have your social identity how you see yourself you know all those kind of things factor in and I, so i think there's a relevance to like oh if you know marketing pretty good and if you're you can have a good conversation like you can study the same things and come out to, oh, if this person's got all this different information, they've been marketed to, even though it might be posing as news or whatever it's posing as, they're getting yeah. kind of sold a message and they're surrounded by it. And, and I mean, yeah. I, I mentioned earlier, screenshotting crappy LinkedIn messages, right? And, <laughs> and, and, and as a joke, and people do that on LinkedIn and they call people out. But there's screens on Facebook. My version is I screenshot things that other people have in their posts that to me are insane looking. <laughs> um, and then I show that and because I'm trying to actually show like, listen, this other person is not in the same world. Yeah. Even I, and, and like, let's say I could be wrong. Like, let's say you and I are wrong. It's possible because we could be in a bubble yeah. that's totally fabricated. I could be getting fed, especially with our tools now, you know, we could be getting fed bad information. Similarly, this is amazing, I can connect these things. Um, similarly to if you're marketing somewhere and you know, you've bought a course or you've bought, you're in a, some kind of sphere and influence where people are saying, you know, it's a numbers game. And so what you should do is send these in mails to people on LinkedIn. Uh, don't worry, you don't have to look at any of their stuff. Like here's what you do, right? Here's your formula, let's go out and do this. Like if I buy that, if I buy into that, Plus I'm getting those messages. And so people keep coming, well, if they're doing it, it must be working, which is the dumbest, the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like it people works. do it doesn't work all the time. It's no right. way, that's not a measure of it working. But then I can say, okay, well, yeah, I'll try it. And then I become the person perpetuating some awful thing that most people hate. But yeah. what else was I going to do? I had a need, I had a vulnerability. Right? I had a problem that I didn't know how to solve myself. Somebody else gave me a solution. 
maybe gave me a bunch of fake testimonials, a bunch of, I mean, it could be all bullshit. And I, really right. I couldn't, I wouldn't know the difference based, except for my own opinion on it. And if I'm vulnerable and I'm gonna say needy, but like if I'm in a pinch, enough of a pinch where I really need a solution, I'm gonna start saying, believing and doing stuff. And the way psychology works is the more I do it, the more my brain will justify it and the commitment escalates, even if it doesn't work. Yeah. And here I go down a tunnel of shitty, shitty messaging on LinkedIn or cold, cold email, you know, whatever it is, like that most of us, like you and I agree, oh, that's terrible. That doesn't work. Like, why would you ever, like, it's off-putting. Um, right. But that's not the information they have. And that's not what their brain has rewired to convince themselves of. Well, I think that, I think what it also is, is like you, you take somebody in that position and you want to think about like, what, what do you want your brand to be? What do you want? You know, and I know that sounds really douchey. I'll just say it like, mm, what's your brand? But truly, like, what do you want somebody to think of you after this experience? And if you are, if you could care less, if you are in a transactional sale, if you, you know, it is a volume numbers game and that's all that matters, smile and dial, that's it, then go for it, right? You're never going to build meaningful relationships with these people your sales cycle might be three days and you're going to just churn and burn and then close your deals and call it a day but what's amazing to me is on the flip side when you have um individuals who are selling to an enterprise space or even a mid-market space or you know the chief marketing officer of an smb company that may be 20 or 30 million dollars in revenue and annual revenue not a monster amount of money for a company um but still that they are still playing the same game I'll tell you that I got, um, I, don't, I, I don't know if this has your examples beat, and, and I'll, I'll say it to the billions and billions of viewers that we're going to have watching this. I got an email from uh, Cox uh, Communications, and it was months ago, <clears throat> and I ended up sending a screenshot of the message to the chief revenue officer. Uh, the message said, uh, our, our fiber lines could be the defibrillator that your business needs to stay alive. And I was like... I mean, what the shit is the matter with you? Sorry. I mean, come on. And I, so I sent it to the CRO and I was like, hello. Um, being a, a bit of a sales expert and aren't you just a decent human being, I imagine that this is not the, the message you want going out to your people. But I also think, you know, to your point, right? Are you jealous? Are you jealous that you didn't get that? I mean, I will, yeah. holy moly. <laughs> um, I think, but what's amazing to me is you even talking to people. So you, you know that we, um, at Sam sales, we've got this line of business called hashtag Sam sales BDR, and we will go and be your BDR team for your company and do all these great things based on our methodology and the way that we write things. But we'll talk to people who are like, you know, I use this, this company that just makes a thousand dials a day and it's so great and I love it. And you know, I don't think we need you. And I'm like, that's amazing. Um, tell me who's calling on your behalf. And they're like, well, it's people who speak English for a ninth language and they know nothing about our company and they can't spell USA, but really excited because we think maybe we're going to get a meeting. And you're like, how, where, where's the logic, right? That comes in and making these decisions and thinking this is, this is the right thing to do. Again, you're, you're right. You know, people have a vulnerability and they just think, okay, but I also think a lot of people are just generally uneducated about sales and marketing, or you have someone that's a sales expert really doesn't know anything about marketing or the other way around. And then they that's make these monsters. No, We're never. Uh -uh, no, okay. totally. Yeah. Especially you and me. Um, but they make these monster decisions or worse. You have a CEO who's like, how hard can sales be? How hard can marketing be? We'll send out a piece of content and maybe somebody will read it and poof, they'll be our client. We'll give someone a call and say, would you like to buy this? And they'll say, sure. Oh my God. Anyway. <laughs> so what you're saying is that's not the way to go. It's interesting. Yeah. I, I think I, I've gotten, a, I need to like back up, but I've got on a little bit of a high horse about sales and for anyone else that is in enterprise sales that has gone through the experience of what it's like from a leadership or individual contributor standpoint, it is offensive when someone's like, well, I could do that. And you're like, could you though? You know, I, I remember years ago, I had a gentleman um, that had managed business development for a large law firm and said, you hire me to be an enterprise rep, right? And I was like, well, 
have you ever managed a quota or sold before or forecasted or nurtured a lead? And it was very offended um, and said, well, I've managed, you know, lawyers and their business development for years. And I'm like, it's just like the assumption that like anybody can do sales. And I'm sure it's the same way from a marketing perspective. Yeah. Like how hard can it be? Right. Demand generation content. Or, I don't know. It's yeah, it all sounds cool. I'll do it. Easy. Yeah. Anyone can. Yeah, I mean, I, I read a blog post the other day by Seth Godin. So, like, I'm, I'm pretty much, I got I got marketing now, you know, like, uh, Easy. Messy, right? You got to, like, just you gotta keep putting it out. And it's like, yeah, no. Put a website um, up. It's cool. That's it. Yeah. yeah, anyone can do this. Like, I mean, I'm not the greatest designer, but, like, I'll write it. Like, oh, yeah, no, it's going to be great. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be awesome. I can send out one sales email. I'm sure that'll come. That deal will <clears> come in. They said they yeah. were five. Yeah, like, I mean, I wouldn't do the defibrillator, uh, defibrillator thing, but, I mean, I'd probably change it to ventilator. You know, um, oh my God, I probably got that gentleman fired and he's definitely coming to murder me. So when I wind up dead, yeah. I, I'm relying on you. To yeah, find, I, I hope that they killer. hire you and then that balances off that your family, whole family could be killed by this insane person who got fired. But, um, that would be an amazing way to get hired though. Hey, your messaging is terrible and offended me. Um, I no. won't sue you, I don't know, anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, one of the screenshots, I, I think I was talking with Matt about this the other day that I had shared with him, uh, also included my responses to them because sometimes I respond to them I mean, um, the scenario was a local person, and it was the course. Of course, it was a financial advisor because here, that's who oh, does that. Um, amazing, the best. And they opened with a the connect request was a hey, it's like you no know, seven one six. I see you're in the community. It's so awesome. What the stuff you're doing? Like, we'd love to connect with you. I'm like, cool. And then the next thing was a let's get together. Like, can we have a quick call so I can tell you about what I do? So not oh even my the, God. not even the pretend networking call, you know, <laughs> which you're gonna turn into a pitch and be like, like listen, dude, like everyone knows what FAs do. Um, yeah. I don't know exactly. It seems like you don't do a lot except for sell services, <laughs> but like I don't, I don't care. And so I responded. Uh, I also he ha he catched he caught me at a moment, right? So that's the other danger of the internet is like. It was in the evening for some reason. I was out in the front porch already recovering from a bad evening. And, um, <laughs> and so I just, I responded and I said, you know, like, listen, buddy, I'm sorry. A, I did mention that you, you caught me at a bad time. So otherwise you probably wouldn't get a response, but hopefully it was helpful. But I said, it's the worst. Like this is, you know, especially to use the community, which is big here. Like being yeah. in Buffalo and hey, where from? But, you know, it's like, and then you use that and then turn it right into something that is not relevant to me. It's not a good idea, even if it was relevant to me. It's not a good approach. Like I know 15 FAs off the top of my head that I've also right. worked with. And I am sorry if your company has set you up this way because the companies I know are crap, right? The companies set them up to be, you know, hey, get your friends and family to buy our insurance and all this kind of crap. And they know that if you turn off everybody in a 10 mile radius, they don't care because you're going to be out the door if you can't keep selling and they're going to bring Completely. the next person in and then hit all their clothes, you know, and these LinkedIn messages. I was like, even if you, and Matt agreed, right? He's like, even if you, that's your protocol and that's what you're set up to do by your company, take some latitude, take three minutes and look at my profile. And something. drop something in that's possibly relevant to me or like, let's have a call because you like beer. Like, it's not, it's not hard with me. <laughs> I'm very personal in my summer. It's all there. In my about. Like, hey, here's what I'm into. Here's what I care about. And that you would skip that. And then cold pitch is insane. I guess what I'm confused about is you're not, you're not dying to give someone you've never met on the internet your billions of dollars of assets to manage. Because, I mean, that, that seems like a very normal, reasonable decision to make. Right. I think... That, that's the part that fascinates me as well. So I will give a plug for, um, I've been with Morgan Stanley for 12, 12 years and Michael Gardner is my FA. If anybody needs one, he's the man. Um, but I like, and, and I, I'm stunned, right? The amount of people that reach out to you constantly, just exactly this exact same thing, right? Like, I'd oh, I'd love to tell you about what we do and what we can sell you and whatever without any knowledge whatsoever. Or even just, I think, Take your, take your position back, look for common connections, you know, look through your friends' networks and say, can you introduce me and say that I have half of a brain and can probably manage this person's money versus just cold outreach. But again, you and I are reasonable people that think like, huh, this is probably not such a great idea. And other people are like, all right, yeah. <laughs> and sign up. 
you know? Same well, with, um, it, it's I a numbers know. game. And like, honestly, we're in fucking Buffalo. There's, the number <laughs> is not that large. Like you can't turn through the whole community and then think you're gonna, like, where else are you gonna go? Like, you know, I mean, this, I don't know the population, it's no but it's, it's not enough to be like, you know, if I was in New York, Okay, blow through some numbers. You know, there's got right. a million one way or the other you can you can lose. That's our Something. total that's our total population when we oh my God. here. You know, I mean you would imagine. I, I I'm with thoughtless. you. It's it's, it's totally so bad. mindless and thoughtless and well, I, I think it's even even getting a little bit worse now to the degree that the uh, the sales pitches are even coming in the connection request. I mean, like, how quickly do you want to be turned down? And I don't know. I have never worked for the company that says, send out 500 connection requests. That's your quota for the day. I've never heard of that. So maybe that's why they're just sending the requests out because they don't care. My 500 are out, that's it. And I don't know, they get paid or something. I, oh, yeah, I know. Maybe, maybe it counts um, the contacts and like the new cadence, they count that as a contact. Oh, including, yeah. the, oh. including the rejection. Hey, well, he didn't oh, ignore, so he, he got it. <laughs> she wrote me back and told me to, you know, kick rocks. Pretty excited about this <laughs> exactly. opportunity. Right. Got it. He said it to my boss, so I'm going to count that <laughs> as a contact. I'm going to wait, you know, like let it cool down and I'm going to hit it again next week. Forecasting that one at 90%. She's definitely coming in. <laughs> exactly. So let's, uh, well, let's, let's give it the positive now. So, and then we'll okay. wrap this up because we could go for hours and be totally irreverent and I've already been blatantly disrespectful to certain people, so I gotta, like, I gotta cut, this, cut this down. But from your perspective, you're doing LinkedIn, you're doing sales outreach at that kind of level, including like practices on LinkedIn messaging, and I'm sure emails and stuff too. So messaging, if you are, there is a thing, you have to make new connections, right? So yeah. what is, like, give me your top three or, you know, like the, the quick version of the process, like here are the things you can do when you're gonna do cold messaging that are still let, actually good. Let me ask you a question. So yeah. tell me, give me your feedback. If I was going to send you an email and I said, Paul, I would like to know, I wanted to see if I could schedule some time with you this week or month or whatever um, to hear about your priorities for the year. What, how do you feel about that? Because here's my, here's my thought. You feel like, okay, so you don't know what my priorities are. You don't know if you can solve my challenges and you want me to get on the phone with you to tell you what my priorities are. And then you think, maybe you can help me or maybe you'll just pitch me your product anyway if you can't help me and see if something sticks. Yeah. These are, this is one of the lines that I see all of the time, right? So we, we even just where people will put messaging together and say, I think this sounds great. I want to hear about their priorities. I don't want to pitch my product. You're giving somebody homework. So the good thing to do, I think one, you've got to think about how do we hook somebody first and foremost, and it's your subject line and your first sentence. We know it is. So you need to do the homework, do your homework on the person, just like you were saying, look something up. Congrats on your first anchor steam plus balding in buffalo i don't know um plus <laughs> sam sales consulting that's probably what i would do at least if i watch your podcast and you got a good personality i'd probably do that because then you would probably curse at me but you open my email which would be very exciting oh. um first sentence i my go to is always hey paul we have yet to be properly introduced but i'm sam mckenna and that's what you're gonna see show me you know me as i call it plus we've yet to be properly introduced and you're gonna think well this person might have half a brain and they've done their homework on me so i'm at least gonna open up the email and see what's in there I think the thing that's important is whatever you say in the subject line, you've got to say something about it. So it can't be like, I saw you drink Anchor Steam and that's it. What about it? Do you mm -hmm. like beer? Do you drink Anchor Steam? Have you been in San Francisco? Tell me something. Like, go on. I get a lot of, I listen to your podcast. Hey, do you want to buy my video solution? I do not. Thank you so much for calling. So talk about it. Um, my middle paragraph is always a very specific challenge that I know, I don't think, I know that person has because they are like many of our clients. You're just like our clients. Um, and I have a way that I can solve it in sort of a vague way. So here's what I mean by that. We talked about LinkedIn Navigator, you and me earlier in our pre-session. So if you thought about LinkedIn Navigator and you've ever bought it or looked at it or whatever, here's how I would hook you into looking at LinkedIn Navigator. Hey Paul, I bet the finding new leads and new MQLs is something that's top of mind for you. And I have a way you can set your MQLs on fire through tracking job changes and a really cool process in LinkedIn Navigator. I'd love to talk to you about it. You're like, huh, I measured on MQLs. I always want more. And I know LinkedIn Navigator, 
This makes sense hypothetically, but I'd need to hear more to see if it makes sense for us. I'll take a meeting. So I do that and then close it out like a human being. Oh, do you have 15 to 20 minutes to talk this week? No, but I do have some time to chat over the next week or two. You can be polished while still being casual and just sounding like a human being. One thing a lot of people don't know about me because I have no accent is that I'm Polish. Just kidding. I'm actually from Switzerland. That's where I was born. I moved to the States when I was five. French was my first language. I went to Swiss finishing school. I've got manners at the yin yang. If you want to know, you want to see my, no, just kidding. Um, if you want to know what, what side of the plate to do all the things, I'm, I'm your girl. So I'll be the first to tell you if your email sounds unpolished or uh, just unsophisticated. Be human, be a little bit casual, and you'll go a million miles, right? That's, this is what somebody wants to see. The most amazing part, and here's the, the other hook to think about, is that a lot of the time people read those custom emails that you write and they think like, oh, yeah, actually I want to hear about this. And then you know what happens? One of their idiot friends texts them, an email from a boss comes in, client, whatever, and they've completely forgotten about you. So the hook is in two, max three days, just follow up and be like, hey, Paul, did you read this email? Kindly. And you, because it takes you two seconds to see my name, remember the subject line, be like, shit, that's right. I wanted to email you back. Well, email me back. So that's my tip for you. <laughs> nice. I like that. I like that. I I'm like not that. passionate about it at all. And I have zero opinions on it. Yeah, <laughs> zero opinions, no knowledge, and totally restrained. Very neutral from where you come first, from. First day in sales. <laughs> Very exciting. Excellent. Thanks, Sam. Here's the Thanks, Sam. team and yours as well. And um, <laughs> we'll talk soon. Sounds good. Thank you. Cool. Thanks for coming out.